So in the next video in our series of little helpful tips, this came in a response to a question that one of your classmates asked on the discussion forum. She said, is there a way to change a sprite without losing the code that I've already written for it? And, and I think I understand the question from that. Uh, suppose we have this program, one that I've used in a couple of my other helpful hints videos here. It's a simple program that just draws out a set of initials. If I get it to run, hello, there we go. So we draw out the set of initials here. It's running a little bit slow right now because I'm running a couple of different things at once. But there we go. We run this out. And, and suppose it, you know, we get this done and, the, and this person says, this is great. I love the code exactly the way it is, but I don't want a cat. I want something else. And so it turns out there are two different ways that we could uh, change this so that instead of a cat, we have something else. The first way is, is, is arguably the easier way, which is that you go into the Costumes tab for this particular sprite, and then you just go about importing a new costume for this. So suppose that instead of the cat, what I really wanted was uh, this beetle. Right? Or, and it doesn't matter. So you could do this from something in Scratch itself, or if you've got your, your, uh, your sprite as a file on your own computer, that's great. But we can grab the beetle, right? and that will add the beetle now into my uh, program. And automatically, when you import costumes, it, it changes to that particular sprite. And so now when I run this, instead of the cat, I've got the beetle. And so again, arguably, this is the easiest way to change it. You don't actually change the sprite at all. Uh, you just change the costume for the sprite to what you want. And then you have the code the way it is. Uh, and you could come in then and choose to, to X out, uh, d delete these particular costumes. Right? If I click on this little X right here, I'll delete those. And so we don't even want the cat around anymore. Boom, there we go. It's as simple as that. And I've changed this uh, from the cat to the beetle. And that's one way to do it. But I could imagine there are situations where we don't want this. So I'm going to click on the revert button. And that will take me back to the very beginning again, to what I had before we started this. And so the second way that we could go about doing this is to actually go about creating a brand new sprite. Maybe you like the cat. You want the cat to stick around. But the fact is that you, the cat isn't who you want to have this code. You want to have the code with the beetle. And the cat's going to do something else. And so you simply want to open up the beetle and get the cat to do some stuff. Or maybe there's more than two scripts here, and you only want some of the code. And so this will work for any of these. So I'm going to assume I'm starting a brand new sprite this time. So rather than opening new costumes, I'm going to get a new sprite. And I will open up the beetle. And so now I've got the beetle. And this is actually a, a nifty little trick. It actually will show up uh, in the course uh, when we get into game playing and things like that. But if I want to copy this bunch of code from the cat, to the beetle, I simply left click on the very, very top of this code, and like I'm going to move it, and I drag it over here to right on top of the beetle, and I let go. And it doesn't look like at first anything happened. I mean, the code jumped back over here to the cat, and so I, you know, the cat still has that code. But what actually happened was I made a copy of it in the beetle, and, and just there, it didn't look like anything changed over here. But, but you know, here's my point: I've got my own unique copy here. So here is the beetle running the same exact code. And so there's the cat. There's the beetle. And of course, if I run this now, they're both going to draw that out. They're drawn out the top of each other. But there's how I could get the code from the cat to the beetle. So two different nifty little tricks for changing your sprite, changing the way a sprite looks, without actually losing the code that you've written for it.